What's up guys, it's Patrick and welcome to the first episode of my new PVM series Ascension Adventure where I try to get my hands on some Ascension crossbows. And because it's the first episode, I want to spend the first few minutes to talk about and explain this series. So like I said, it is a PVM series and PVM in this case specifically refers to bossing because if I really wanted to make some easy cash, I would just set up frost dragons all day long and make like what, 4 mil an hour? I mean that's, that's good money and it's not luck based like bossing but that would also be boring. Every kill would be like, oh look, a frost dragon bow and I just made another 17k or however much they are nowadays. Uh, yeah, we're not going to do that. There is also going to be a little twist. Normally when people do series like this, um, they get the drops, they sell the drops, and buy the item they want. Which, I mean, that's fine. It's not like they can do anything else. But in this case of the Ascension Crossbows, the money I earn isn't going directly into the crossbows. It's actually going towards the keys. And I'm going to use those keys in hopes that I can get pieces of the crossbow myself. And, of course, put the crossbow together myself. Um, there's two reasons for doing this. One, it makes the series more interesting, and two, there's a chance I can actually save money, like a lot of money. I've heard of people that profit about 100 plus mil from putting the crossbow together themselves and selling it. Although, notice how I said there's a chance of this. There's also a chance I would be spending 100 plus mil more than the crossbows are worth. Uh, that would be quite unfortunate, but there's always reason number one, so I consider this a win-win situation in the long run. So, of course, at the moment, we are in the money-making stage. I am going to kill a different boss each episode, and I think I'm going to start with a goal of about 300 mil cash uh, before I try getting the piece of the crossbow. I say I think because that might change depending on how prices fluctuate, but anyways, let's roll the clips. Like I mentioned before, I'm going to go to a different boss each episode, and in this one I went to Bandos, just something nice and easy to start the series off with. Speaking of easy, by the way, I noticed that Bandos is much easier than the other God Wars bosses. I mean, Bandos was always the easiest, but now he's significantly easier. If I really wanted to, I could stay at Bandos for about 4-5 to five hours, but I wouldn't do that, at least not anymore, because that sounds really boring and I don't have that kind of time. The point is, I could stay at other bosses for only about an hour and sometimes two. I think Bandos needs a buff, because people have been complaining for a while about how the drops aren't worth as much as they used to be. I personally don't think it's that bad, I'm not going to spoil the details, but you're going to see at the end that I actually got some pretty decent drops and made a good amount. Speaking of drops, I love using the Pack Yak here because General Gador drops these bones that you could sell on the GE for about 11k each. Of course these bones aren't stackable so if you don't have a Pack Yak, uh, you kind of just have to leave them there. But if you do have a Pack Yak, you can send them to the bank using Winter Storage Scrolls and you just made an extra 11k a kill. I can also do that with other things that aren't stackable like Rune Items and Crystal Keys and I'm sure there are other things but uh, those are the only ones that come to mind. As for the items that are stackable, I actually pick up every item that's stackable no matter how cheap it is. Which includes things like steel darts and steel arrows because the way I see it is, if they're stackable, they only take up one inventory space. And when I pick up enough of them, they'll start to add up. People generally don't pick up cheap items because they think it's a waste of time and sometimes it is. But in this case, there's an entire minute in between spawns. I can consider it a waste of time just to leave these things on the floor while you're waiting a minute until the next spawn doing nothing. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I got a festive cracker from General Gador in that last kill. I kept it all the way through his trip, and I opened it later to get one piece of coal. Thanks, Jagex. I did add it to drops, but I deleted the recording because it was just bad. Imagine if I got a black Santa hat, though. I don't know what the street price of that is right now, but that would have been awesome to show on video. By the way, do you guys know if you can have more than one festive cracker at once? I know you can't bank them, which is why I kept in my inventory the whole time, but I'm just curious as to whether that one cracker I was holding on to prevented me from getting any other ones. If you know, post a comment below. Anyways, I should have mentioned this before, but this trip was about two and a half hours long and it took me an hour to get the crackers, so basically it took me about an hour to get anything even remotely rare, which, like I said earlier, it then turned out to be one piece of coal, which is like, what, 170 GP? But, um, then about half an hour after that, I actually picked up an elite clue scroll, which, as you can see on screen right now, so, um... I don't know how I feel about clue scrolls, to be honest with you. 
they are a complete waste of time to do it. It's just so tempting because there's that slight chance of getting third age. Imagine if I got that on video too, but no, I did do it before I started making this video. The reward was horrible. I ended up deleting the recording just like with the festive cracker. I think I got like 50k in coins, which I kept in some other garbage, which I dropped. That means so far an hour and a half in. I got two things that are remotely rare, the Festive Cracker and the Elite Clue Scroll, but they ended up giving me nothing, so basically I still consider myself dry at this point. An hour and a half dry. To be honest, I knew I wasn't going to get anything good from the Festive Cracker and the Elite Clue Scroll, so I wasn't disappointed when I got the rewards from those. I was disappointed when I got those and said something like Banos Tacits, especially after an hour and a half. I would even take a Banos War Shield, which by the way is the worst Banos drop. It's worth like 100k last time I checked. Actually... There are a lot of shields that are cheaper than they used to be. It makes sense though because people prefer dual wielding and two handed weapons over shields. If you're going to cow fight king or something like that you only need one person more shield so that doesn't help prices too much. There's also the fact that the dungeoneering shields are the best in the game not counting the one from the new barrels because those are still kind of new. I think they need more time to stabilize. Spirit shields are kind of good and are comparable with dungeoneering shields but they aren't the optimal choice a lot of time because they drain your prayers so fast. But anyways, that's off topic. Finally, two hours in, I got Banos Tassos, which you saw earlier, and those cost like 4 mil. I mentioned earlier that people have been complaining about how cheap Banos drops were. I already told you about the War Shield, but wow, Tassos used to be like 11 mil easy. Probably even more than that, but I didn't pay attention to them when they were more than 11 mil because that was a time when I was a poor noob and came nowhere close to being able to afford them, so... That was just like, forget it. When I say Bandles drops, by the way, I'm specifically referring to items that have Bandles in the name. I looked it up before I started doing this commentary. The chest plate is about 6 mil. That is super cheap as well. The hilt is 850k and the god sword is 1.5 mil, also cheap. The boots are mil and the gloves are 2.5 mil. I say those are fairly decent prices for uh, gloves and boots. They need to fix those drop rates though because the price difference shouldn't be that big. The Bandles boots and gloves have the same stats or at least almost the same stats. I don't quite remember but whatever. Also, why do they cost more than a hilt? The Bandles God Sword isn't even a terrible weapon for people at the appropriate level because obviously it would be bad for me to use. And then there's the last item, the Bandles Helmet which I pick up 20 minutes after it's tacit. At this point I'll say my dry streak is compensated for. The helmet costs 6 mil, this is another problem with the drop rate, the tacit should cost more, but yet the helmet costs more because it's more rare. By the way, it probably sounded like I was complaining throughout this whole thing. I don't have a problem with the prices, I even said earlier that I think I made a pretty decent amount, I just think the prices make no sense, that's all. But that's it for the PVM clips, I'm now going to show you a clip of me price checking all the uh, loot I got with live commentary. Hey guys, welcome to the live commentary part of this video. I'm done with bandles for now and I got all my loot in my inventory, so let's price check it. You know, I didn't discover this uh, option in the bottom right hand corner of the price checker window until recently. Like, I saw it and I didn't know what it was, so I put my mouse over it and said, empty your backpack into price checker and thought that was pretty cool. It's pretty convenient, especially for series like these where, you know, I get a I'm going to have to dump a lot of items into the price checker window, and it's convenient that I could do it all at once. So, uh, yeah, this is the worth of all my loot. It's about 12.7 mil, and yeah, not bad for first episode, I would say. I think this took me about two and a half hours, so that comes out to maybe like five mil an hour, something like that. I don't know. I don't feel like going to a calculator right now. And I got really lucky with the Bandles Helmet and the Bandles Tacits because I got those really close together, even though I was on a one-hour dry streak in the beginning. But, um, yeah, see, as you can see here, it is definitely worth banking the bones if you have a pack yak. Uh, I made an extra 780k out of it. Uh, this coin, or this cash deck, is the exact amount that I got. I did keep track of that, and... Um, the steel darts and the steel arrows, I mean, they total up to about 18k, which isn't bad. I mean, I still think it's worth picking up, even though a lot of people probably won't do it. And, oh yeah, there's also the snapdragon seeds, which are only 2.5k each. That is so disappointing. Um, but everything else, I think I did pretty good. Uh, 12.7 mil, like I said. So, 
Anyways, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the very first episode of Ascension Adventure. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.